Good afternoon. My name is Eli Glasner. I am an entertainment reporter with CBC News, and we have a very special Facebook event for you today. We are talking about the, the connection between the deaf community in Canada and music. And some of you watching might think, well, what could there be a connection between the deaf community uh, and music? But in our reporting, we've discovered that there's a very strong, very powerful, very emotional connection at times um, to deaf people who really do enjoy music often in their own way. Let me introduce who's joining us today. Uh, over here we have Gitri Prasad. She uh, just returned from seeing, perhaps you noticed the t-shirt, Jay-Z in concert in Toronto with a sign language interpreter, which is unfortunately something that doesn't always happen at live events in Canada. Next to her is Jim Hardman. He is the Director of Information Technology at the Canadian Hearing Society. And also we have a sign language interpreter helping us share this story with you, Jennifer Hawkins. So let's begin by talking to our guests. And Gaytree, I want to start with you. Um, give us a sense of what music means to you in your life. Growing up, uh, my family did expose me to music, and I, it was it was a, an ability to express their experiences, to uh, focus on your thoughts and your life and your love, and it was something very special to me growing up. It, it inspires me, and it almost makes me feel like a free bird. And how did you experience music, physically speaking? What 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 did you feel? What did you hear? Well, as a little girl, like I said, my family was heavily involved in music. And my dad would pull me closer to the speaker so that I could feel the, the bass on the stereo. I would touch it, and then I could start to feel it. I could feel the boom, boom, and the bass, and then my dad would sing, and my family would all sing. And they, said, they, they looked so happy, and I wanted to be happy just like them. It was so inspiring. It was almost like goosebumps traveling up my arms and I wanted to dance and that's how I was able to feel the music and as I grew older I was what I was reading the lyrics and I was able to sort of connect to the music and then dance and and from then I had such a tremendous love for for the music and you can see the way that Katri's face is lighting up I mean this just brings her so much uh, joy now Jim give us a sense of what music means to you as a deaf person Well, really, I think it's an opportunity to understand music, the emotion that the artist is expressing, and at the same time, it brings out your emotion and then that connectivity. And there's different lyrics that come up, and, and you may come across new words and new concepts, and getting a better understanding of what the artist is experiencing. That's helped me. But I love the feel, the vibration and the beats from the music and the riff of the guitar and the drums. It's entirely fascinating. I've seen so many live concerts with the light and the stage show. And when you see the audience participation, it's incredible. It's an overarching, uh, overarching wowing experience. Jim, do you have a favorite kind of music or artist? I do like classic rock. Um, I like our hometown boys in Toronto, Rush. Right? <laughs> really? I like Pink Floyd. I like the Rolling Stones. So overall, classic rock from the 1970s, that is, that is my choice and my genre. Growing up, when I was 15, 16, that's the music we listened to with headphones at a loud volume. And, and, I, and I haven't been able to stray from that quite yet. I, so then I have to give uh, Gaytri a turn. Give us a sense of some of your favorite musicians. Well, of course, obviously Jay-Z, <laughs> as you can see. I love Rihanna. I love her song, Rain and Shine Like a Diamond. Beyonce, yes, I love her. So those are my three favorite artists. Now we have a question from our Facebook audience. Uh, Luciano asks uh, if you can explain, can you listen to music the same way as before? Do you hear more the beats rather than the harmony? I, 
I think it's both. Really? It depends on the song and how it presents itself. I can feel the beat by touching the speaker, and the closer I get, I can get a sense of the harmony, and I can, I can feel the beat. I absolutely can follow along with the music, so I, I would say it's both. I do wear my hearing aids, and when I have them on, I can experience that. And for me, I do feel the bass. The bass is the biggest part, the drums and the guitar. But the things that, uh, you know, in terms of sound and intonation and that unique quality, mm -hmm. I don't get that. I get the foundation of the music right. and, and I can flow with that. So Deborah Lee, who is uh, out there in Facebook land, uh, says that she wears hearing aids and has attended many, many concerts. Tony Morgan has commented saying he's glad to see uh, this topic today. And actually, we've seen a lot of great discussion about this topic since our story uh, was aired. But I want to back up and talk about Getri, the t-shirt, and your experience. So you had a chance to go see Jay-Z last night. Originally, you weren't sure whether you'd be able to actually attend the concert with the sign language interpreter. After CBC inquired about Air Canada Centre's policy, they did arrange an interpreter for Jay-Z. Getri, tell us, what did last night feel like? Bring us back there. Yeah. Last night, we got to the concert, getting ready to see Jay-Z. He comes up on stage, the interpreter starts signing, and I thought, finally, oh my God, finally, it's so exciting. The music started, we could feel the beat, we were tremendously excited. The downside, I have to say, is the position where the interpreter was with minimal lighting, mm -hmm. we couldn't clearly see their interpretation. And they were positioned in a place where the crowds were walking in front of them and it was bothersome. We were hoping that they would move past. I mean, I understand this is really one of the first times that the ACC is providing the access and they're not sure where the interpreter should be positioned, but so let's learn from our mistakes and for future conference or concerts, let's make it better, have the interpreter closer. So close enough to the artist where you could feel more engaged with the music and the beat. And, and that's what we need, essentially. But it was still a good experience. And, and Jim, I imagine this speaks to the lack of experience that many venues have in providing this service, in making concerts accessible. And you're right. Um, there's not a lot in Ontario, and there's not a lot in Canada. I've gone to Cops Coliseum, and they provide interpreting services. And I've, uh, and I've gotten the ACC involved and never got the right answer. They were giving me the runaround and said, well, we can provide a cart captioner. I really didn't have a very positive experience. It wasn't accessible. I'm willing to pay a full price ticket for a concert. I want to have equal access as every other concert goer. I've attended several concerts in the States, the New Orleans Jazz Festival, and they've been providing interpreters for, for the entire festival. And it's amazing. And it's so interactive. And I can go with a group of friends and understand everything that's happening in the concert, similar to every other concert goer that's there. Christine has said, come on, artists, bring your interpreters on stage. So why aren't there more interpreters in Canada? Oh. I just don't think that Canada is aware enough of deaf culture as a nation. They haven't had enough exposure. And we, as members of the deaf community, need to step up and expose people and fight for our rights. And we, we want to hear music. And that is what leads me here, to represent the deaf community. And many deaf individuals or many consumers don't realize that they do have rights to access and they can fight for their rights to have interpreters provided at these venues. And we have the Human Rights Code and interpreters should be provided. A lot of deaf individuals aren't aware of this. So hopefully, Gaytree and myself and, and, and all a bunch of others can get that word out there and expose that. Gaytree, when you were there with a group of your deaf friends last night, what was the reaction like with the crowd? I imagine they must have noticed you and the interpreter. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, a lot of people seated beside us looked at us puzzled and wondered, what is this person doing up there? Some of them filmed the interpreter and it's like, <laughs> yes, share this film, go viral, go viral. It was funny how hearing people responded and, and quite frankly looked puzzled. For example, the interpreter was there doing their thing and people were trying to walk by, but they weren't sure if they should walk by and it was a bit awkward. So like I said, that's one of the downsides, but I think obviously that's one area in which things can improve. And I, I was curious, how were his skills as an interpreter Jay Z is a very fast rapper. Uh, did you get the sense if he prepared, or was he struggling to keep, catch up? Because in America, we have these interpreters who are specialists that seem to do nothing but music concerts. There were two interpreters, and two. they actually prepared. I met with them two or three days before the concert, and we rehearsed some of the songs. They were trying their hardest. They worked really hard, asking me so many questions, asking for my feedback, and I was willing to share it. It was nerve-wracking because they know Jay-Z is fast, lightning fast, and yesterday was amazing. I was, I was in awe, it gave me goosebumps. It was amazing, they did a really great job. They tried so hard. Now keeping in mind, this is their first time as well. Right. A kitty cat queen, that is her name on Facebook or YouTube, asks, can you sing to the music? Now I know sort of the answer from when we spent some time together uh, in your living room, but what would you say to kitty cat queen about how you sing to the music? Well, I don't use my voice, I use my hands to sing. I use American Sign Language and I sign the songs. So as a hearing person would sing the lyrics, I use my hands as my art form. Well, here's an interesting question. Miles uh, is asking, do deaf people use balloons or touch something to feel the music? So we already talked about putting your hand on the speaker. Are there other techniques to help either of you feel the music better? Um, for me, a balloon in an audience, they might question what I'm doing with a balloon. Yeah. I'm sorry, no. Uh, what's essential is when I attend a concert, for me to be as close as possible to the speakers mm -hmm. so that I can feel the vibration in my body and connect to the music that way. But a, a balloon, I don't know. But we also feel it through the floor. So we've got, we get it through the floor as well as the speaker. So it runs up our body and through our body and we can experience the beat, but no, I doubt a balloon would work. Now Jim, can you explain to us why there seem to be so many more interpreters available in the United States at events such as this as opposed to Canada? What advantage does the deaf community in the U.S. have? Well, I think that's related to the Americans with Disabilities Act that's mm -hmm. in place that um, prevents people from filing lawsuits, right? If, if accessibility isn't provided, then they face uh, litigation. If you can imagine, there's 28 million deaf individuals, deaf and hard of hearing individuals in the United States. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, larger numbers, more exposure, a larger collective to fight for the greater cause. And that legislation has been in place in the U.S. since 1990. What do we have here in Canada? We do have the AODA, Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. It lacks the teeth, absolutely. We do have the Canadian Human Rights Code and the Ontario Human Rights Code, and every province does have their own code and commission, but like, as we know, legislation varies. Mm -hmm. varies. In Ontario, the accountability to provide accommodations for buildings and services and customer service, yes, the codes do cover that and legislation does cover that. But if Gaytree was to file a complaint, for example, she talked about wanting to see a Sean Paul concert and they said they wouldn't provide an interpreter, how long would it take to get a response if she was to file a complaint typically? And I, I mean, I have yet to file a complaint myself, but I'm sure in due time we'll see that. But 
several times, um, you know, it, it takes three months. It's not three months. a quick process. And so then, the you know, by the over. time they responded, the opportunity's lost. Right. That actually happened over the summer in Montreal with uh, someone else we spoke to, Natasha Latrell. She wanted to see Walk Off the Earth. Uh, she asked to have an interpreter provided, and she eventually ended up filing a human rights complaint. And she's still waiting for that to make its way through the system while the opportunity has come and gone. I have another uh, couple questions here. Asim Hasib asks about other languages. Uh, how about other languages? How about Arabic? Are there other sign languages in other, you know, from other cultures? Yes. Um, some interpreters do provide interpreting in other languages. But there are several sign languages throughout the world. I've attended conferences with 5,000 deaf delegates, some using Japanese sign language, French sign language. The list goes on. We do not use the same sign language. It is very different. Our experiences are different growing up. Some have some similar nuances. We can understand drink and drive, perhaps, but other, other ways to communicate are more difficult. And it would be parallel to around the world, Spoken languages are different, and Mandarin and Cantonese. Uh, we've got ASL, we've got British Sign Language, and like Jim mentioned, Japanese Sign Language. It differs throughout the world. I have a comment here from uh, Chris Deslodge, who says, we were interpreting from English to ASL, which are two completely different languages, especially in the unique use of language. In hip hop, interpreting is really hard to do live. And, and that's something I've seen with very skilled interpreters who they try to use ASL to represent a rhyme or a metaphor in the language. And I guess finding a way to do that from one language to the other can certainly be a challenge. Uh, let me mention, sorry, go ahead. And actually, Chris was our interpreter was our, from okay. last night. So he had to interpret in two different languages? Well, no, he, it's just translating oh, I the see. Going music from, lyrics okay. into ASL. Okay. Well, Chris, I'm sure you did a wonderful job. Uh, she seems very, very happy with her experience. Let me ask uh, a couple more questions. Um, Abigail says, what do you make the next step for this concert uh, to make it happen in the future to provide deaf and hard of hearing? So I guess w what she's saying is, what do we need to do so that this isn't just a one-time event? What needs to be done so that promoters and venues can welcome and encourage the deaf community to come to concerts? I've had a conversation with the ACC, and we're actually having a meeting in the near future with headquarters to hopefully resolve that issue. Oh, that's great. I think each venue does have staff that is responsible for providing accessibility for persons with uh, disabilities as per the legislation. There is somebody in there, uh, in these places, in these positions, so if we get to them, I mean, it might be a new experience for them initially, but it, it's an ongoing battle. Jim, do you think there's uh, a sense in the deaf community that there's no point in asking, so people have stopped trying. I, I know when I spoke to some of Gaytree's friends, they didn't even know where to start when it came to going to live shows. Yes. Um, there's our organizations such as Ontario Association of the Deaf, and they do provide the support and advocacy among the communities. And so often it's up to the individuals like Gaytree and myself to take on that fight. I, I'm looking to Gaytree as the pioneer in this, right? And, and hopefully with continued mm -hmm. advocacy and working together, we can put the pressure out there and, and educate individuals. We, we need community support and it can't just be the two of us, but it has to be a larger collective to really get that push out there. And we're not about to stop. I mean, just because last night happened, we're going to keep going and we're going to work hard. But it's, it feels like you opened a door, Gaytree, in that you've helped open the ACC's eyes, that there's a community here that is being underserved and, and you're starting something. Yes, definitely. And the ACC has had some realization and I was really inspired because 
when uh, you were mentioning how happy we look when we're dancing and we're singing, it's like finally, right? We're starting to make it happen. And people don't realize that deaf people really do love music. I have a couple more uh, questions. Patricia Ann asks, what is the difference between reading the lyrics and having them signed? When you look at ASL, it's a visual language, um, but sometimes ASL, I mean, it's not broken English. It is its own actual unique language, and sometimes interpreters can interpret in, in quite an abstract manner, and that's where I struggle because I'm watching that abstract interpretation, and I understand the signs, but really, I don't think the lyrics mention that. So this has been a debate among the community on on people think that there should be more of an English-based interpretation of the lyrics so that we can actually understand the true lyrics in the songs. And for me, growing up, I loved art, I loved theater, and so it's a bit easy for me to do that abstract translation. I can look at the lyrics and understand that when they're talking about a woman, they're not talking about a woman, they're talking about a woman. Right? Or when they're talking about a car, no, they're talking about a car on the strip, right? So I, I have that uh, artistic lens, I think. But I guess it also shows how just captioning, if all you had was text uh, beneath or shown at the same time as the music, it wouldn't necessarily capture the flavor of the experience. Yes. Because captioning doesn't provide the tonality, the emotion in, in invoked. Yeah, the it's tonality. flat. Um, so you're really trying to struggle and, and understand, are they screaming? They look angry. They're full of facial expressions. And the interpreters will provide that grammar on their face and express that through the interpretation. And an example of that is with the interpreter, they were moving along to the beat. And that made me want to dance, too. It made me want to get up and move. And, and seeing the interpreter's facial expressions and the sign had such a strong influence and made me want to do that too. And knowing when things were louder or when they were quieter, I mean, th to have that visual access is of utmost importance. And, and that's part of what you talked about when we first met is that you want to be included in this experience and you were able to, to share it. Chris, your interpreter from last night, wanted to mention to applaud the venue for trying this for the first time. He said it was a great learning experience for us all. Now, Matt Maxey asks, with interpreting for shows, how can venues make the section for deaf and hard of hearing more accessible? So you had some frustrations uh, last night people walking in front of uh, the, uh, the interpreter. Ideally, what would you, either of you, like to see set up um, for shows? Ideally, you've got the main stage, and you've got the audience, and you, you, you see where the security typically stands. I think it would be ideal for the interpreter to be right next to the security, because the lights are, are ensuring that the stage is so bright so you could see the interpreter clearly. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you'd be able to access the bass from the speakers and be close. That would be awesome. And also, in my experience with attending venues in the States, is they create a designated deaf zone. So we can actually go in that area, see the interpreters as well as the stage, and have a clear line of sight to all of it and still be able to experience the bass and, and be close to the speakers. That would be perfect. I just want to point out something. Matt Maxey, I uh, just realized, is the interpreter who tours with Chance the Rapper. And they have an amazing partnership where someone else in our comments uh, talked about how, you know, why don't artists have their own interpreters? That's exactly what Chance the Rapper has done. He has this great uh, sign language interpreter who himself is hard of hearing, and they've toured across the states together, and they do outreach at shows, inviting in uh, the deaf community. And I guess it speaks to what you're talking about, letting the community know there's a place for you here, and then you would see a larger turnout. Yes. And that's what Jim and I want to share with everybody and get that exposure out there to the artists. 
and that this is what we need and this is these are our experiences and so they can better understand and help us as well and and we want to be able to work collaboratively as a team with the ACC with Rogers Center with really any venue or with any artist that would be amazing to have that opportunity to work together we have another comment from uh, Sabo who says promoters or artists should provide sub packs for deaf concert goers can anyone explain what they mean by sub pack s u b p a c no would that be some kind of hearing I have and no idea we don't know all right well I, I don't I don't know Sabo if you want to uh, give us more um, detail on what you're talking about perhaps we can uh, talk about that Jim give me a sense of what we can expect from Ottawa and the Trudeau government uh, in terms of better accessibility rights and one of the things that we're seeing with the Canadian Disabilities Act that we're expecting coming down the pipe is a commitment to ASL and LSQ becoming national recognized languages of Canada to recognize those both ASL and LSQ as languages, official languages in Canada, will then force those individuals to provide the accommodations necessary. And that's something I've heard from other members of the deaf community. Just to explain, the Liberal government has talked about finally introducing national legislation for accessibility rights. So right now we have various laws and acts in various provinces, but there hasn't been national legislation, which is what America has, which is why some say we're a little behind. And I mean, give me a sense of how important it would be if ASL and LSQ, the Quebec Sign Language, was actually recognized as an official language. And what that would bring about. that accessibility to language would be equal for everything uh, all the information provided by the government and information would be in our language and we could understand it deaf individuals would be able to access everything in their mm -hmm. first language right English is uh, uh, the second language and French is the second language for a lot of deaf individuals so to have that equal access Keyword being accessibility to language is key. And why can't they provide that for all individuals, whether it's in information brochures? We're seeing them provided in many different languages, but where's the ASL and where's the LSQ? Gaytree, okay, we're, we're almost out of time. Can you share with me a, a favorite moment from last night? Uh, my friends, <laughs> the looks on their faces, their facial expression, the grins from ear to ear and their eyes were sparkling and just everybody <laughs> was so excited and into it. I felt inspired, my heart melted and it really made me want to cry. I wanted to continue, I knew the concert was almost ending and I, no, keep going longer. And I want to see this happening again and again and so truly inspired by my friends' faces, it was amazing. I, and yeah, a bit emotional too. Jim, do you think there's progress on this issue in Canada? Uh, minimal, minimal <laughs> progress. Uh, we want to see <laughs> tremendous progress. We want to see that equity throughout. It's short and simple, plain and simple equity. Well, thank you so much. Uh, every time I do one of these stories, it, it opens up my eyes and I realize there's an entire other culture that, uh, that I'm missing out on. So thank you for sharing uh, this with uh, all of Facebook and all of Canada and all of our CBC audience. It was Jim Hardman, the Director of Information Technology from the Canadian Hearing Society. This is my friend Gaitree Prasad, who went to see Jay-Z last night and had a great time. My name is Eli Glasner. This is our interpreter, Jennifer Hawkins. Thank you so much. You can continue to comment uh, below uh, after the video uh, finishes. And uh, see you again. All right. That was